Do you guys ever consider that Kandarin is just Mandarin, but with a K instead of an M? Um, so, <clears throat> I might be sick. There's a chance. There's a, there's a slim chance that I'm sick. But do you know what else is sick? Jagex. Because they're, they're dropping some big reveals. This, today, guys, a new relic comes out that we've never seen before. It is called the Reloaded Relic. That insinuates that there's a loaded relic as well. Um, but look, there's one line of text for it. Choose any relic from any tier below this one. I've been posting daily leagues videos, and I will continue to do so as long as I can. And uh, I highly recommend you like and subscribe and maybe put a comment. Are you going to pick this relic no matter what? Or are you like, nah, I'm taking Golden God. Um, and we're going to get into that uh, right about now. Okay, so this relic was revealed today. It literally says, choose another relic from any tier below this one. But we need to know what tier is this in. And they show us. They show us which tier. And, and it's up it's up over here at the end. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. So here are the tiers. I've got a better I've got a better one than I can show you here. But look at this. You just you got all the tiers there. Okay, cool. Let's go and look at them. So this is a tier four relic. They've they've confirmed that this is tier four. We don't know how many points it's at. And we also don't know what is the third relic in this tier. So we will get into all of the tiers at this point currently. And let's see, is this worth taking? At what point should I be should I be taking Reloaded to pick a different relic? Um, the first tier, quick synopsis on tier one, Power Miner. It gives you that sick crystal pickaxe. No requirements. When you fail to mine a rock, you get a 50% chance to succeed. It's just 50% mining faster kind of thing. Items gathered from mining are automatically banked. That's big. Rocks don't deplete until you've mined four ores. It can go up to seven if you have Asgarnia and you get the mining gloves. You'll be able to toggle the following effects on for the pickaxe. So uh, collected ores are automatically smelted and grant smithing XP regardless of your smithing level. So I had to look into this um, because I was like, that doesn't say anything about does it note the bars or does it bank the bars? And it does. It says that right there. Automatically smelts and banks bars. So um, yeah, that is that is good to keep in mind because it doesn't, it doesn't say, it says collected ores are automatically smelted and grants smithing XP. It doesn't say if it turns it into a bars and gives it, because you know, uh, the infernal pickaxe and uh, different things like that, they give you smithing XP, but you don't get the bars that just, it just incinerates them. Same thing for the gems. Gems gathered from mining are automatically cut and grant crafting XP, regardless of your crafting level. So, power miner is, is very good for what it does. It, it gives you quicker mining slightly more afk mining i mean four times the afk seven times the afk if you're you got the mining gloves um and then it it automatically smelts and banks the bars for you so bars uh equal money as well when you get all those bars if you turn them into like plate bodies or something like that it gives you free money if you turn them into bolts and you slap some feathers on them it gives you fletching experience um and then also we all get Karamja, so Shiloh Village, there's the mine of uh, gem rocks, so you can get a lot of crafting XP from mining those down there, and uh, it just auto, auto gem smiths and crimples them. It crimples them up with the crafting. So we'll come back to this. Lumberjack, you get the Echo Axe, crystal variant of the equipment, no requirements. When you fail to chop a tree, you get a 50% chance to succeed, so you're just going to chop more, more gooder. Um, items gathered from woodcutting are automatically banked, and then you can also toggle this. You can automatically burn the logs for the fire making XP, or you can automatically fletch the logs into arrow shafts for the fletching XP. So why arrow shafts and not like long bows or something like that? It's a good question. Uh, they probably just had to pick. Uh, they didn't want to have it so you can choose whatever you want to fletch, but arrow shafts then allows you to train your fletching by um, slapping some feathers on there very quickly. Um, and then if you buy something like uh, broad arrow tip heads with cash, then you'll be uh, you'll be cooking. You'll be making a lot of fletching gains. So fletching is is quick regardless of this relic. This one really is just AFK wood cutting. It, it is by far the weakest of this tier for uh, all use case scenarios. But if you like wood cutting and you just want to chop logs and have a good time, uh, go ahead and pick it. Like it it really depends on your play style and which regions you're picking. The, um, the number one choice, as per polls and stuff like that online, would be Animal Wrangler. So, you get the Echo Harpoon. It's a uh, crystal equivalent, so very good. It's very strong. 
Uh, when you fail to fish, you get a 50% chance to succeed. So you're going to be fishing almost every single time you can. Um, items gathered from fishing are automatically banked. Fish caught have a 50% chance to be automatically cooked, giving you cooking XP regardless of the requirements. And then you also attempt to catch fish one tick faster. It doesn't say anything about you know chopping one tick faster or mining one tick faster. So this one gets a nice little buff there. It also acts as a big net uh, lobster pot or any rod. So any rod is good because you can get the barbarian rod from that. Um, but also a buff to hunter. Hunter traps will never fail. Box traps will catch chinchampas faster and are doubled when caught, giving double XP. Impling jars don't break, and you'll also never burn food while cooking. This one has just so many, it's it's like multiple things in one. It's a hunter relic as much as it is a fishing relic. Um, everyone gets Karamja, so if you pick Animal Wrangler, you can go to the Karambuan spot and catch Karambuans indefinitely because that fishing spot does not move. Now, unless they put some something in place, uh, you'll be able to AFK for 25 minutes before your character gets automatically logged out. Everything will be banked. Clue bottles will be automatically opened and turned into stackable clues. So there's it's literally a one click and then AFK for 25 minutes. You're going to get a lot of clues. You're going to get a lot of fish. You're going to get a lot of cooking and, f and fishing experience there as well. But on top of that, Hunter Traps Never Failing is insane. Like It, it buffs Hunter almost four times faster. Um, when you consider catching chinchampas. There are tasks for chinchampas. It also gives you range experience very, very quickly. So this is also kind of a range um, relic as well. So of these three, I was going to pick Animal Wrangler for sure. As I said, that AFK Karambons is very good. If you have Banker's Note and you want unlimited food, this is how you can get that. There are other ways of getting unlimited food, but um, for this, yeah, this is a very easy way of getting it. And now we could double back and pick Power Miner. I'm not picking Lumberjack just because it, I don't think it does much for me. But for Power Miner, it, uh, I don't necessarily have any good ways of training smithing. In the league, there, if you pick Desert, you will have a lot of tasks to do in Giant's Foundry. And Giant's Foundry is a couple hundred K XP an hour in the main game. So when you're, when you're running the calcs on that, let's say it's 200 K XP is what you're getting in the main game times 16. So... 3.2 mil and that's you know times four is you know four hours to get level 99 smithing roughly so if you pick the desert you definitely don't need this for the smithing xp um if you pick fremenic you can use the blast furnace unless they've announced that that's disabled i apologize um but yeah so let's let's press on what's tier two cooking because there's some some real arguments to be made for picking a second Relic from Tier 2. Friendly Forager. Um, without reading through all of it, Friendly Forager is just going to pick up random herbs for you every 9 game ticks, which means over 650 herbs per hour. You can force which herbs you pick up by filling your pouch with other herbs. So if you only want to get Ranar weeds, then you can fill your pouch with everything but Ranars, and it will only pick up Ranars. When your sack is full, you can click to get all of the herbs out of it noted into your inventory. So it is quite handy. Um, the second benefit is that your secondary ingredients have a 90% chance to not be consumed. So you won't need as many secondary ingredients. And then you also get an extra dose from each post and create, which is not, uh, it's not that huge. It's okay though. Corner cutter is the Sage's Greaves. You get the pair of boots that while you're wearing the pair of boots, you get agility experience for just running around. So it makes agility completely free. The only downside of it is that you can't wear actual boots like primordials or something like that so you lose out on maybe some strength bonus or some range bonus but if you're a ranger you're losing out on pagasian boots and pagasians don't give any extra damage they only give accuracy and in this league there's so many accuracy buffs that you're just not going to need it so um, not only that you also get two completion counts per lap of an agility course um, and 25 percent bonus xp so again 90 mil xp is guaranteed with this 99 50 mil XP and level 99 is pretty well guaranteed. You're going to have to do some agility course laps to get tasks completed anyways. Um, so my argument for this is I'd rather just, like I if I'm picking Mauritania, there's tasks to do the sepulcher and the sepulcher drops the, uh, the special ring and the special ring is 200 points. So 
I'm probably just going to do Sepulchre until I get that. And at that point, that's so much experience because it's, um, you know, it's 900 KXP, 90 KXP in the main game. So it's going to be a lot of XP in, in this. So if you do want just level 99, this will save you probably around 12 to 15 hours of gameplay by picking this. Um, but then when you compare that to how much time is saved with thieving, a lot. Um, thieving gives you the following benefits. 100% success rate to thieve. Automatically re-pickpocket an NPC until you can no longer do so. Um, you can't, uh, if your inventory is full, you can't pickpocket. But if your coin pouch is full, then you can't pickpocket. So the coin pouch is going from 28 up to 84. So you'll be able to pickpocket for 90 seconds straight. The only other way would be if you can unlock Kandarin and uh, you've, you can get up to 420 coin pouches, which is a nice number. Um, stalls never deplete. So you can pickpocket from stalls like indefinitely. You can steal from them. And uh, yeah, it's just overall it's great. But the biggest thing right here is when you pickpocket an NPC, it will also pickpocket all NPCs of the same type in an 11 by 11 square, and it'll give you the extra loot for them. It won't give you the extra XP, it'll give you the extra loot. So right away, thieving is a very fast skill in the main game, and this uh, will speed up your 99. You could have 99 within a few hours of the league starting, but um, you're also gonna get a lot of loot. And the loot that you're gonna get, I discussed in a previous video, um, like Vyres, you get a ton of XP from Vyres, uh, you get blood shards, which you won't even need that many blood shards. So it also gives you runes, which are nice. It gives you money. So this gives you a lot of cash. It also gives you um, uncut gems and cut gems from Vyres. Now you can also do the same thing in Tazar, where um, if you have ice gloves, you don't take damage. But if you don't have ice gloves, you will take damage. But you can steal from Tazar for Tokol and for gems. Uh, there's also uh, two stalls in Tazar where you can get um, unlimited ores and unlimited gems from that as well. So this has a few skills wrapped into it plus uh, unlimited cash. Um, it's pretty strong. It's pretty damn strong. So it just comes down to if you want to max and you refuse to do agility laps in leagues, then you probably want to pick corner cutter. If you want to do a lot of PVM and you don't know how you're going to get your herbs, um, first off, look up good ways of getting herbs, but second off, maybe you take this and you get the passive chance of getting herbs here and there. It also gives you 99 herb lore, which is going to be a handful of tasks. But um, moving on to the next tier, if you pick two of these teleport tiers, you're actually trolling. Uh, don't do that, please. I beg. Fairy's Flight will let you teleport to any fairy mushroom, um, any, uh, what is it called? Spirit Tree Tool Leprechaun. Um, and yeah, it's just, that's it. It, it teleports you to various places around the world. It's pretty solid. I've picked it in previous relics, but when it goes up against these other ones, it's not as powerful. Bank heist to me is the weakest in this league because it teleports you to any deposit box or bank or bank chest. But a lot of, uh, like the only time you need to go to a bank is when you're banking your stuff and you're not going to need to bank stuff very often in this league. If you pick Total Recall, or if you pick Banker's Note, um, it's just not as necessary. And there's no banks like close to stuff that's super good other than maybe Nex. Um, but once you're at Nex, you don't, you're fine. So this one seems to be the weakest of the three just based on all the uses that we've cooked up. But the Clue Compass is very good. It, uh, it allows you to teleport to any stash unit, uh, Fail of the Bard, but also your current Clue Step. So you'll be able to you will be able to grab uh, some clues, and if you wanted the you know teleport to Barrows very easily, there's a stash unit by the chest, but there's also a clue step to talk to the crazy old man digging the graves up top, the grave digger. Um, so if you get that clue step, you just keep it, and then you use that to teleport out of Barrows and into Barrows over and over again. So that's very powerful. Going on to the actual tier fours, this is where the new relic comes into play. You can choose another relic from any previous tier. I'm going to take a slurp of water. Do you want to listen? Oh, delicious. I love drinking a fish's house. Um, so Golden God is the big one. I also released a video on Golden God and all of the numbers behind it. Essentially, if you have Varlamor or Fremenic, you can get 
uh, two billion experience, two mil, two billion coins per hour over that even. The way it works is you get 15% more money when you alk something. There's a 65% chance to not consume the item as well. Doesn't cost any runes to do it. And if you have a stack of items, it'll just keep auto alking forever. So that's part one of the relic. You get unlimited cash and you get a lot of magic experience. You get 99 magic for free with this. You also get the benefit to prayer for 20k cash. You can give that to an altar and it will give you prayer XP for it, equivalent to a dragon bone, which is which is quite good. So you get unlimited cash, and then what am I gonna do with the cash? Well I'm gonna I'm gonna spend it on prayer XP and get 99 prayer, maybe 50 mil prayer, maybe 200 mil prayer. The third part of this relic is all items purchased from shops can be noted, provided the items can be noted. So if it's an unnotable item, then it won't be. Um, you can toggle this effect if you want. Um so you'll have unlimited cash, you'll be able to buy whatever the hell you want from shops, and it'll note the items from shops. And in leagues, shops are instanced, so there's no stock that you need to worry about. The stock will restock every time you buy out the stock. There's a lot of stock in that sentence. Um, so it is a very good relic. What it does, in essence, is it handles uh, prayer for you, magic for you, and... With that money, you can buy from uh, crafting shops, for example. You can buy runes. You can buy different things. But you really won't need that much money in this league for different things. The only way that this relic like, is a clear best in slot is for um, construction, in my eyes. Construction is still a very, very fast skill. If you're just making your planks, you can teleport to and from the lumber yard very quickly um, to get your planks. But... It, with unlimited cash, you could just buy magic, um, what are they called, rocks or whatever. There's a couple of different things that you can buy from, from the shop on Fremenic or Varlamor. And, uh, and that gives you tons of XP. You'll be 99 within a couple hours, not even. So it's a very powerful relic. But when you compare it to what could be coming, and to Reloaded, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the right answer is. It depends on your play style. Because Golden God, a lot of it is like, it's very good short term. And then after a while, it's completely and utterly useless. This will not be used again. Once you've finished your prayer uh, levels, your maybe your construction levels, your magic levels. Um, and then when you buy stuff with the coins, you're getting your crafting, whatever else. But if you're doing like any PVM, it drops a bunch of these supplies anyways. So just passively, you're going to get that stuff all completed. So it's uh, it looks like a fun one. It looks like fun to have a max cash stack in a league. Um, you can you can go to Prif and you can buy a Crystal Crown if you want for a task, stuff like that. But I think I'm, I'm very strongly considering taking Reloaded and going back down and not picking a second Teleport one. That's so stupid. I'm looking at either... I'm going to pick probably Dodgy Deals because of how powerful that is. And then I might pick Friendly Forager, and it, it just sorts me out on herbs. The downside of picking that is you get a lot of herbs from raids, and you get a lot of herbs from PVM. So I gotta look into how many herbs will I actually get? Will it take me a long time to get to the herb lore level that I need? Like, I wanna be able to make super combats and things like that. This is just very, it's a nice thing to get passive herbs, but I don't think it's required. And it just brings me back down to I'm picking Animal Wrangler. I've locked that in. I'm not picking Lumberjack because I don't think it's strong at all. I might go Power Miner. I might pick Power Miner because mining will now become significantly faster, which is not a fast skill. If you're Power Mining like Iron, for example, you're getting you know close to 80k XP an hour. It's a bit less, but that times 16, 1.2 mil. So it's 10 hours of mining to get 99 mining. And then when you're looking at... Um, the smelting option on it, it's giving you bars and the bars can be converted into plate bodies, for example, which you can then sell or elk for cash, or you can turn it into dart tips if you've got desert, or you can turn it into, um, what are they called? Unfinished bolts if you want to get some fletching experience from that. So there's definitely a lot of uses for this. Looking at smithing for my regions that I'm planning on taking, I don't have desert for giant's foundry i don't have anything i'm gonna have to make my own bars and then smith them 
or get them as drops. And I was looking at what am I going to have to kill to get 99 smithing if you pick Mauritania and you don't have any other areas. It was going to take me over 10,000 gargoyle kills to stack up all the steel bars and stuff like that. And then with those steel bars, I got to smith them probably one at a time. So what is this relic going to be? I strongly suspect it's going to be one of the two things that we've seen previously. It is either going to be Equilibrium, which allows you to get experience in the skill that you're training, like bonus experience. Um, the way Equilibrium works in previous leagues is you take your total level, you divide it by 10, and whatever that is, you get that much experience in the skill that you are training. Every time you get an XP drop, it gives you that experience. Every time you complete an action, it gives you that experience. So if you fletched uh, one log and you got 1,000 XP and you have 2K total, well, 2K divided by 10 equals 200. So you then are getting 1,200 fletching XP. It's like, oh, nice, 20% buff. But there's other things like when you clean an herb, you only get like one experience from cleaning a Guam, but it'll give you 200 and one experience. So there's a lot of cases where it was really, really good. It gives a lot of extra experience. It helps you max quickly and get your 50 mil skills. If you were a skiller, then it is probably uh, a strong consideration for you to take Equilibrium. The other option that I could see would be Production Prodigy. Now we've had Production Prodigy in a lot of previous leagues uh, in different ways, but it processes all of your goods in your inventory all in one tick. So it will fletch every log in one tick. It will smith every bar in one tick. It will craft every gem. It will do all of your potions for herb lore. Like all of those production skills, it makes it instead of being one at a time, like 27, you know, you, ch you have a chisel and you have 27 rubies. You don't have to go one at a time with the rubies. It'll do all of them at once. My, uh, previously I've taken this relic because it's very powerful. It speeds up every skill 27 X, but when you're speeding up something like crafting, when you're, when you're crafting some rubies, it's around 300k XP an hour in the main game. So 4.8 mil XP in leagues. And you're speeding that up so that it's essentially zero time. But why would I need to zero time a skill that's already just over two hours to get level 99? Like I don't need to speed up crafting that much. Same thing with Herblore. Herblore is a 300k XP an hour one. If you've got the correct region, smithing is an extremely fast one. Um, or yeah, like it's just, there's some pros and cons to it. I don't think it's as powerful as people actually think. Um, but maybe we'll see. Maybe they combine both. Maybe they make production prodigy and equilibrium one relic. That'd be cool. So let me know, are you going to pick golden God? Are you going to pick reloaded or would you pick equilibrium or production prodigy? If that was the third option now looking ahead, what are we missing? We got one more thing coming grimoire overgrown would the third option here be i don't know would it be production prodigy and then this one is equilibrium would it be vice versa would this be something completely different maybe berserker i was thinking if they do add berserker which is like a league staple to to this you would have berserker where it doesn't factor your hp in this time it only does max hit on your first hit and that would make it very fun um let me know what you think. I'm curious. Are we going to add an entirely other tier of relics tomorrow? Or are they going to just drop a whole bunch of stuff on us? Are they going to have a relic here that says you can pick a fourth region instead of this relic? I mean, at that point, guys, Kandrin's back on the table. Um, thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Sorry I'm sick. My voice sounds like shit. But, uh, I mean, realistically, at the end of the day, it's night. So, 